Stafford giving it to Purge. Again, some running room, and he's going to score. Hubbard gets tipped and caught by Jay Scott. Welcome to the RCA Dome in downtown Indianapolis for the final time this venue hosting state championships as we prepare to move to a new venue just across the street. It's already been a memorable weekend. Many feel as though the best is yet to come. This is Mark James, Evansville Wright, the Panthers at 14-0 against the Lowell Red Devils at 13-1, Lowell a state champion in 2005. Prepare to square off for the 4A state championship. Happy to have with us the outstanding coach from Franklin Central High School in the Indianapolis area, Lance Scheib. And coach, you and I have been talking about this one uh, since we first got together for the 3A game, which Shatard beat South Bend St. Joe's in 31-7 and win the 3A title game. Pretty anxious to see how Lowell uh, fares against a very deep, very talented uh, very quick and very strong Evansville Wright's Panther football team. This should be a great matchup. I tell you, everybody I talk to from up north says this Lowell team is outstanding. Got to beat a Dwinger last week in, in, the, in the semi-state. I'm just incredibly impressed with what Evansville Wright's does. This should just be an awesome game. I am excited about it as a coach, and everybody should be excited about it as a fan. This should be just a special, special game. Mr. Football candidate Paul McIntosh, the head of the stake for the Panthers, if you will. 135 of 206 through the air, 2,188 yards. And if that's not enough, 181 carries, almost 1,500-yard rushing, and 31 touchdowns. We'll see if they can contain him today. Lowell will go on the offensive first. Stefan Peck takes the kickoff and gets a pretty nice wedge in front of him, carries it across the 25 to the 27. Hey, what yeah, it was a nice way to start the game. I thought it was a nice kick. Uh, again, Lowell got the ball back uh, outside the 25, and anytime you get to the, about, about the 30 as a coach, you're pretty happy. Peck will line up at fullback, 887 yards on the season. And coach, they feature an outstanding sophomore running back for the Lowell Red Devils. Well, I tell you what, anytime you run for 1,600 yards, you're doing something special. I'll be anxious to see how he fares against uh, Rice defense. Brandon Groby, the running back. High formation, receiver split wide to the right and left with a tight end to the right. And to the young man to the right side of the offensive line and little or no gain there. He'll run behind Geno Wentworth, Nick Schultz, Josh Hayden's the center, Lang and Brian DeMario finalize things up front. Jeff Barker has 16 catches for 357 yards with tight end for Lowell. Luke Kasich and Wentworth Eric Roderick among the receiving core will set the Wrights Panthers defensively after this play. Pick up of three, second down and seven. Grubby out of the eye. Little ISO play, pushes the pile forward. Pretty good surge by the offensive line to squeeze out another yard or two. Up front. Moose Campbell, that's a 50s throwback. Moose Campbell lines up along the defensive front with number 72, Mark Snotty. The ends are a pair of good ones. 79, Josh Wengler, and 83, Austin Craig. No kidding. 21 sacks on the season. Houston Hobbs is a DB along with Alex Basham, Zach Russell, and Lucas White. Stroud, Fisher, and Chris Digg, the linebacking core. It's third down and four for the Lowell Red Devils. We've seen multiple offensive formations out of the teams through the first three games. A pretty similar offensive set for Lowell. Pass almost picked off in and out of the hands of Jeff Barker. Lowell disrupted it just a bit. Just enough. Houston Hobbs impeded the view and caused the ball to fall to the turf, and Lowell will kick it away. Well, I'll tell you what, as, as a receiver, there's nothing harder to do is try to catch the ball after a defender has, has tried to make a play on it and missed it. Uh, great stand and wait to start, start the game for uh, Wright. Uh, again, Lowell getting a great, great, great surge early. Uh, this is going to be a battle of field position early, and I'm anxious to see what, what Wright does once he gets the ball. David Lang set to kick it away for Lowell. Bunner, kicker, and handles the kickoffs. Jeffrey Hudson, 
deep to receive. Does so on the 35. Gets a block to the 40 that is swarmed under by a host of black shirts. Leading the charge was Lucas White. Wrights will go to work first and 10 with McIntosh, Ryan Williams, Tyler Julian, and Jeff Hudson. Ryan McIntosh in the receiving core up front. They'll feature James Ogilvy, Tyler Mattingly, Adam Herman, Josh Leffler, and Moose Campbell. Slate Gander is the tight end. Tell you what, I've been uh, hearing a lot of things about Paul McIntosh. I've seen him at camp for the last couple of years. I'm excited about wa watching him play and see how this uh, this flex bone offense works for Evansville Wrights and John Hart. McIntosh to pass on first down. They're going to go for a bunch in a hurry, and they have a man open and he overthrew him. He won't miss very often. Had Tyler Julian up the seam. One on one, and he was all by his lonesome. Luke Kasich had the coverage, but he was looking at his back. He does a nice job when they empty the backfield. There was nobody in, in, in the backfield with Paul. Uh, Lowell did a great job of, of, of adjusting to it, and it's it just a, uh, a well executed play, but uh, just missed barely. Second down and 10. This time they'll run it inside. Ryan Williams and the road was closed. Logan Wright, the D tackle along with John Black to make that stop. Joe Carlson, a defensive end with 11 uh, sacks. Jeff Barker, a guy who will move around a lot in the scheme of their defense. 61 tackles and eight picks. Lukasik has four interceptions. Remboski, the other corner. Dave Eastling, Brian DeSummer, Justin Juarez, and Ben Rigsby. The linebacking core, Luke Palmer, their safety on third and long. McIntosh underneath. Pass is complete to Jeff Hudson. Hudson, all kinds of running room across the 45 to the 42. Almost too many receivers in the route to cover. I tell you what, that was a great job by the offensive line. That play took a long time. He uh, went from one side of, of the field and drug across to, to the other. Paul did a great job of keeping his poise, but I give that pass completion credit to the offensive line for giving him time to throw the ball. On first down, Paul McIntosh decides to keep it. Pretty good read there as he works his way across the 35 to the 33. You know what, Rice is doing a nice job right now of taking advantage of in, in most chase championship games where the kids are just a little excited. And uh, again, Lowell just was in position and just, just didn't make a play just because he over pursued a little bit. It was a nice cut by Paul McIntosh. Officials time out for a measurement. Again, one of, one of the biggest things right, right right now that both teams are trying to do is just catch their breath. Uh, it's just one of, one of those things, the excitement of being here. They've been waiting uh, all, all morning for this game to occur. And now it's finally here. Now let's just get it, now let's get it on. I think uh, it should be a great uh, uh, start to this game here. I'm anxious to watch the role respond to what Wright's doing. Second and short, less than one for McIntosh and company as they're ready to go as soon as the play clock starts. Working out of the shotgun with Tyler Julian to his left. Looking out the flat, passes complete to Jeff Hudson. Hudson has the first down and more, knocked out of bounds at around the 25, stepping up to make the stop. Luke Casey, the corner. That was a great uh, uh, open field uh, tackle by uh, by Lucas, and I think uh, it was a nice little pick play by Wright, where one one receiver ran into the other DB and basically uh, picked him off, and he was all by, by by himself. Eight yards the game. Hudson comes in motion. This time. Stepping through to make the tackle. 31, Brian the summer from his linebacking slot. An outside linebacker in the scheme of that defense has walked up to basically a defensive end position and shot right down the line and made the play. Loss of about a half a yard. Well, that was a great, great coming off, off the off the edge. That's a nice job by Kirk and his defense to uh, come up and kind of stymie this uh, Rice offense a little bit. Julian Tyler joins McIntosh now just off of his hip. Jeff Hudson comes in motion from left to right. They'll roll it that way, moving the pocket, looking at Hudson underneath. McIntosh going to keep it. Eludes one tackle, then another. 
and makes a nice little gain out of something that Lowell thought they had strung out for no gain. I'll tell you what, they're doing a nice job. Wright says it going in motion, it's really dictating and telling Paul what kind of defense they're, they're in. And when they're running with him, it tells him it's some kind of man to man. Uh, you know, Lowell's definitely set on stopping uh, Wright's run. Uh, and Rice has done a pretty good job of mixing up a little play, uh, pass and play action pass. Gain of about three, it brings up a third down and eight. Hudson comes in motion. See if they'll run him underneath the receiver instead. McIntosh keeps it on the quarterback draw. Breaks one tackle, then another is close to a first down. If he gets to the 15, it is a first down. As a coach, there's nothing more frustrating than a quarterback that runs the ball. And you can always account for everybody else. But it is so frustrating, and they've done a nice job here. Paul, Paul does both. Uh, Lowell's got to do something here to kind of slow him down a little bit. I bet he's even a good bus driver. I'll tell you what, he pretty... He does he, everything else well. He's a neat kid, i tell you what, he really is. On first down. Yep, it's got to be a fade flag. Penalty marker should be down. They say Ooh. no, incidental contact. Wow. I guess. Wow. <laughs> well, I just getting ready to say. That's letting the play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, it's one of those things they're playing uh, man to man, they're playing up close. And uh, that was uh, the replay shows it. It's, uh, it's uh, probably a little questionable there, but you know what? As a coach, I'd rather see the, the, the officials keep the, their flags. Uh, in, in their pants and not throw it and let the kids decide the game. Pass was intended for Ryan McIntosh. And they're pressing uh, at the corner, especially on him. Hudson lined up in a slot behind him. They're going to work Tyler Julian. And uh, boy, nice result there. A little off tackle. Got the outside sealed and. Had a nice little running lane there across the 15 to about the 12. Tell you what, in both cases, their last two plays, uh, Wright's been in, in a gun formation, which means quarterback is about six, six yards deep. The snaps have been a little lower, kind of thrown off the timing a little bit, so I'll be anxious to see how that plays out the rest of the game. Well, Ogles be the center. Look at him. He's set up like a catcher in base. <laughs> yes, he is, isn't he? My goodness. On the keeper, off the option. He won't beat him to the foul. Right now. Once that end commits, if there's no corner out there, and even at that, I, McIntosh one-on-one -on -one with the corner is going to go favorably for Wrights most of the time. Hey, boy, what a great read. Oh, what a great open, open drive for Evans for, for, for the right. It's just neat to, to see them come out and, and do this, and I'm anxious to see how Lowell will now respond to this. This is a very good ball, uh, ball club, but uh, uh, well uh, next to played by Paul McIntosh. Extra point kick is up, and it is good by Houston Hobbs. 6.44 left in period number one. Seven and nothing rights. You're watching the 4 8 Football State Championship presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAAsports.org. What is that? It's the most comprehensive coverage of Indiana high school sports ever. IHSAAsports.org will have live video coverage beginning with this year's high school football season. IHSAAsports.org will have audio and on-site blogs of all high school sports, photo galleries, editorials, score updates, and on-demand content. It's cutting edge. It's, it's on, on demand. demand. It's IHSAAsports.org. Relive the magic. Can a drive look any easier than that drive look for Evansville Wrights, Coach? I'll tell you what, at times when those things happen, that's when you get the most scared as a coach because your kids think it's the way it's going to be the entire game. Lowell will have an answer. I will guarantee you that. They have done a great job all year on defense. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Evansville Wrights and that, and that drive, and John Hart called a great series, and, and they ex execute very, very well. And, again, I'll be anxious to see what Lowell does offensively to give his defense a chance to regroup the coaching staff to find out what, what the problem was. Um, and in that case there was Paul McIntosh. He is, uh, as advertised, uh, an outstanding young man. As you mentioned, not only a great athlete, but a great kid. 
quality kid. And uh, he's, I'm assuming, the kind of player that John Hart will remember 15, 20 years from now. Well, he really thinks the world of Paul just because of the fact it's more probably more for his leadership than even his abilities on on the field. And it's just it's neat to see good things happen to good kids and and it's one of those things again, it's uh, uh, it's nice to see the game start the way it did for Wrights. I'm anxious to watch Lowell now come back. Uh, they're an awful good football team. Well, you know, talk about quality of kid. We're, we're lucky enough to have John Staniford come back to our weight room quite a bit and work out with our kids and, and be there with them. John, of course, formerly of Purdue and the Indianapolis Colts. And, and I tell our kids, you know, you're probably not going to be as good an athlete as John Staniford was, but you can be the kind of kid that John Staniford was and you can be the kind of man that he is. I'd say you're exactly right. I think that's a, the great things that kids come back and give back to the program. And I've heard nothing but great things about John, and, and it's, it's nice to, to hear that because, it's, you know, as, as a coach, it's always great to, to see our alumni come back, especially the ones that can make, make a difference more off the field than, than even on the field. Jeffrey Barker on the return for Lowell takes it across the 30 to the 31. Well employed split backs this time on first down and 10. Their second offensive series of the afternoon. Where the football is pecked. Breaks one tackle, then another. They try to stand him up, but he keeps the legs driving. Zach Russell, or Kissel rather, thought he had him wrapped up and dropped, and he stood Kissel up and squeezed another yard or two out of it. As we mentioned, uh, nice threat as a fullback. 13 touchdowns on the season, 198 carries for 887 yards. Tell you what, that was just a case where he where he had, um, he was lower than the man tried to tackle him. He had great leg drive. Now, I'm not saying they don't have an outstanding defense, but they've been known to give up some points this season. <laughs> no question about that. 60 to Columbus East, 34 to Cathedral. Peck in the open field across the 40, the 35. Little juke step buys him a few more yards. Finally chased out of bounds inside the 15 to the 13. What a great way to answer Wright's drive. That's the, I knew. I tell you what. Again, Lowell didn't come here uh, just to watch Wrights uh, march up up and down the field. They're going to play keep, uh, keep away th themselves. Uh, Peck was just a great, great run, uh, great effort. And now, you know, hey, they're knocking on, on, on the door. Moving bodies where they want to move them up front. That's where it's won and lost. Basic 4-3 defense. Find the halfback this time. And Grubby stuck his nose in there and picked up a couple. As we mentioned, 21 touchdowns for him over 1,600 yards. That was rushing a case. on the season. Yeah, that, was, that was a case there where, where Rice just, just did a great job. I think they had a little stunt because they're all slanting to the tight end. I mean, all the linemen were coming to, to the strong side. And they, they got him going to be, or, or got him before he, um, he got going. On second down and nine, high formation, receiver to the right. Toss sweep to the right side, gets a little seam, trying to get to the corner. Tripped up and dropped at the last minute. Marcus Stroud, the middle linebacker, really did a nice job, coach, of running down the line of scrimmage when he saw the lane, pursued and made the tackle. Tell you what, he runs well. He's not, he's not real big at 5'10 and 175, but he got to, to the ball very, very well. And really, really uh, tripped, tripped him up and got him going before he, um, he, he got going. Third down nine, Lowell trying to keep their drive alive. Slot left. They'll look that way. Going toward the end zone, pass intended for Daniel Ramboski. Plenty of defensive coverage there. Alex Basham, the corner among those defensively for Evansville Wrights. I think the big difference there was, uh, you know, Wright put, put, put a little pressure on. Uh, the quarterback, quarterback was not off by, by much. Uh, still a great answer for Lowell. Uh, it'd be nice to get three points here. Is you got to come back and respond. When you get hit, you've got to come back and hit them right back, and, Lowell, and Lowell's done that. David Lang set to attempt the field goal. Spotting the football at the 19, a 29-yard attempt. Ball is down, kick is up, plenty of leg. No good. Wright spins, and 
and O'Brien. That was a big stand for, for Wright there, I'll tell you what, but still, from Lowell's standpoint, great answer. Really, really good answer. Step away quickly, 4-12 left in period number one. Right seven, low nothing. You're watching the 4A football state title presented by Dial 1 Heating and Air on IHSAASports.org. temperatures are just around the corner. Will your system keep you warm? Dial one hour will show up for your appointment on time or the service call is free. Don't waste your time. Call the experts at dial one hour today. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at dial one hour. McIntosh under pressure, running right, wrapped up and dropped in the open field. Pretty good pursuit by Jeff Barker. Good athlete on good athlete there. Well, I tell you what, I'm, I'm just impressed the way Jeff was in, in, in space there. Uh, th this is a real big series for Lowell. They've got to calm down a little bit. Uh, they are over pursued last time. Got to keep Paul in, um, um, inside the the, uh, the pocket there. And it's uh, uh, this is a big, big stand for uh, Lowell here. Second and ten for Paul McIntosh and company. He'll keep it. Little option. Running a running room. Boy, that end just bites off that little cross buck face, uh, fake, and a uh, little seam there off the left tackle, and he is gone. That was a great play call there. They caught Lowell in a blitz. Uh, they're, they, were, they were bringing their, line, their, their outside linebacker up on the line of scrimmage. Lowell's lineman did a great job picking it up, and uh, Paul did a great job of, uh, of keeping it and making big, big, big yardage. 13-yard gain to the 34, bringing up a first and 10. McIntosh. Steps like it's a draw, hands it off to Tyler Julian, and Julian rides the wave, if you will, across the 40 to the 45. Hey, look, this flux burn offense that John's running here is, is really impressive right, right now. He's got Lowell uh, on his heels a little bit here. I'll be anxious to see uh, what their answer is and probably be a little more putting a little more pressure. Uh, look for a little play action pass and, uh, and, and something over, over the top by uh, Evansville Wrights. First and 10 from the 45. Hudson comes in motion. Look for him underneath. McIntosh rolls right instead. Throws it underneath. Little out route. Pass incomplete. Intended. Nice. Oh, that's nice coverage there. I, you know, again, that was a. Uh, uh, you know, this is real big for uh, for Lowe to keep uh, McIntosh in the uh, pocket. Uh, thus far, they haven't done a very good job of doing that here, but this is a big, big, big series here. Sturdivant, a 5'9 senior wideout, the intended target. Second down, 10. Play call coming in with, with just eight seconds left. Clock down to three. They get it away in plenty of time. McIntosh looking out the flat, finds Hudson. Hudson chased out of bounds across the way after a gain of about six. Into Lowell territory at the 49. One nice thing that Evansville's doing here is they're going no, no huddle. And they're not in a big hurry, but what they're doing is they're letting the, the Lowell defense dictate what, what they want to get into, and they're making the play calls off of that. And that's uh, uh, something that we see now from the pros all the way down to high school, and it's, it's proving very effective here right, right now for Evansville Wrights. And again, the observation made repeatedly, defense will get impatient if you make them wait, make them wait, and make them wait. Little cluster formation to the right side, flooding the right side with four receivers. Can't cover everybody. One guy you should definitely cover, but they didn't there, was Jeff Hudson. He only has 1,000 yards receiving on the season and nine touchdowns. Coach Hart really thinks he's going to be somebody special for just being a young kid. He's done a great job for him. Uh, you know, you know you, you've got two trains of thoughts here. Either, either go get McIntosh or, or defend him. And right now, uh, Lowe's trying to, to, to defend him, and i like to see that probably is going gonna, gonna, gonna to change a little bit. Just shy of the 36 with two and a half to play in the first quarter. Wright's trying to add to their 7-0 lead. Looking for the deep ball here. Pretty well defended. 
very well defended in fact Ryan McIntosh the uh, intended receiver and uh, one on one coverage by Luke Palmer and we mentioned Palmer very active listed as a free safety but has the kind of numbers reminiscent of a linebacker 61 tackles and eight interceptions it's been a great season for him he has had a great year he is a leader in, in, in many areas and again did a great job there on 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 coverage second down and ten snap to McIntosh back the other way with Tyler Julian all kinds of running room to left side. they're really counting on that weak side defensive end and weak side linebacker chasing play action and running down the line of scrimmage uh, because uh, they are really exploiting that to the weak side of this uh, little defense they've done a great job also just up front the lineman right now you know, Wright is winning that battle up front and that's uh, there's a lot of running lanes McIntosh out the flat to Hudson. Give him six. What's the key to defending option football? Basically getting your defense to, to, to stay at home and handle their assignments and not change the football? And that is the hardest thing to make a young man do is do his job. As easy as, as that sounds, the hardest thing is to do your job every time. Because when you don't, just like here, they kind of make, make you look silly and make you pay a little bit. Second and five. Five yards on the completion to Hudson. Julian on the carry. Couple of yards. Nice adjustment there by, by Lowell. They locked, they, uh, they decided to go straight man, man to man on the receivers and, and put one more guy uh, closer to the line of scrimmage and were able to uh, get him uh, stopped before he got going. Big, Hudson, big. Hudson has five catches for 48 yards. McIntosh, six carries for 42 yards. Tyler, six carries for 35 yards. So they're racking up the offense already. 21 plays, 125 yards. And we're not through the first quarter yet. Now they have a first and goal. It all starts up front, and right, and right now, uh, Wright's just blowing them off, off the ball. It's something that, uh, again, that's going to create some mismatches, look for some play action, just because of the fact that we've got too many guys up there. Christopher Digg on the carry. Quickly, back to the line of scrimmage. Digg again to the five. Gain of a couple. The one thing that the option and, and this offense does to defense is it slows it down. Now, uh, it looked like early Lowell looked a lot like Chittard in the last game where they like to get a lot of guys to the football. When you're playing option football, you can't do that. It, it's one on one a lot. And right now, Rice is getting the, the, the better of that. Second and goal from the five. McIntosh again. Hand off inside. D gets the carry, pushes the ball to the two. It's a nice push. Kind of, kind of surprised that uh, McIntosh did keep, keep, keep the ball there. But great job by Lowell. Third and two. McIntosh kept it that time. Pushed his way toward the goal line for the touchdown. Stuck it in there pretty deep. Then withdrew. Got to the goal line. He saw enough of a scene to get the pay there. Having played against it, this type of offense, I, I, I can tell you, it's a pain to play against. And again, when you've got a quarterback as athletic and McIntosh, puts a lot of pressure on your defense. And he is running this offense to perfection right now. Kirk Kennedy and company need to be careful. Because uh, this thing is on the verge of flat getting away from it. Well, Rice is going to score, and we knew that. And I think uh, the biggest thing now, Lowell's got to come back and answer, and not just get a nice drive, but they've got to score some points here just to restore some faith in their, in their kids. Houston Hobbs with the point after. It is up, and it is good. 14 seconds left to carry number one. 14 nothing Rice. Back after this, you're watching the 4A state championship in high school football. It's presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air. And it's on IHSAASports.org. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Lovell, the host of Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk. Join me Friday night right after the game for Indiana Sports Talk. 
as we give you the scores and the coaches' reactions from around the state. Scores every 15 minutes and coaches' comments every Friday on Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial 1 Hour Air. Congratulations to Mitchell Spear of St. Joseph's High School, the winner of the Phil Eskew Medal Attitude Award in 3A, the fourth athlete in the school's history to win an IHSAA Medal Attitude Award, the first since 93. He ranks among the top 10 students in a senior class of more than 200. Currently serves as senior class treasurer and president of the National Honor Society. He sings in the school choir and takes part in several co-curriculars, including the German Club, Intermural Spirit Club, and Life Athletes Club. Also selected to serve on a student leadership council for the Northern Indiana Conference last year. He intends to study mathematics at the University of Notre Dame next fall. Serves as team captain, a three-year starter, honorable mention, all that I see selection. Plays baseball during his freshman and sophomore year. He is the son of Robert and Patricia Spear of South Bend. And he got a Farm Bureau Insurance. The IHSCA's corporate partner presented a $1,000 scholarship to St. Joe's High School in the name of Mitchell Spear. On the return, Stephen Peck for Lowell. Had a good one last time. Pretty good one this one. A time. Picked it up on about the nine and rode his blockers south to about the 30-yard line. L spot at the 28, where Lowell will go to work first and 10. It's a big series for uh, Kirk and uh, Lowell. They need to establish themselves a little bit. Uh, again, they're going to have to have to try to. They had a lot of luck with Peck uh, run, running the fullback uh, earlier. Uh, but I think it's real big for them just to get a more confidence for, for the football team. Kurt Monix throwing for 1,000 yards this season, 48 of 94. Again, a team that doesn't throw it a lot. Spinning away, Groovy from a would-be tackler, but right into the arms of other tacklers, and one quarter of action will disappear. We'll check the scoreboard and see rights in front after period one. 14 to nothing over Lowell. You're watching the 4A Football State Finals, presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAASports.org. You know what's cool? A perfect spiral. A beautifully run pass route. An open field shoestring tackle. You know what isn't cool? Complaining to the officials. Criticizing your teammates. Showing up the other team's players. It may be intense. It may be emotional. But it's only a game. The Indiana High School Athletic Association reminds you of these sportsmanship tips. When an official makes a call, accept it. When a member of the opposing team makes a great play, applaud it. When an opponent extends a hand after the game, shake it. It's only a game. Play it cool. Practice sportsmanship. High school sports. Pure spirit. Pure sport. This message brought to you by the Indiana High School Athletic Association. Happy to have with us as our analyst for 3, 4, and 5A, Franklin Central's outstanding football coach, Lance Scheib, in his seventh season there. Uh, sometime next season, hopefully within week number two, you will win your 100th high school football game in your 16-year career. And uh, that will most assuredly be a special moment. And uh, is there any place else you'd rather set that mark and reach that achievement than Franklin Central? No, I tell you what, I just, I'm so blessed to be there. It's a great com uh, community. We, we've got great kids. Uh, we're growing. Uh, it's a great place to raise my family. And I just, uh, I'm very, uh, very honored to be the football coach there. And hope Hopefully I'll be there for many, many more years. No secret, folks have linked you to a couple of high-profile openings around Central Indiana, and while certainly that's flattering, that also at times can be a bit unsettling for a football coach. I tell you what, it just means our program is headed in the right direction. Uh, we welcome all of uh, all that. Our kids just know our focus is to make sure Frank is the best it can possibly be. Very well put. Little toss sweep. Nothing doing as the interior of that Evansville right defense a great surge by Weininger, Campbell, Snoddy, and great support by the linebackers, Fisher, Stroud, and D. Talked to uh, Coach Hart on Friday. His, his big theme on defense was crowd the line scrimmage, make them have to throw the ball to beat him. And right now, uh, Wright's uh, plan is working a little better than, than what Lowell's is. Lo and behold, you look up, and all of the sudden, you find yourself in a third and nine. 
Not a good position to be in offensively against a very, very quick, very talented Wrights defense. Maddox under pressure, throws it underneath. Almost a great throw and catch. Rodrock was open momentarily. It looked like it got into his hands, but it was knocked away at the last moment. It was a great play by the quarterback. I think it's a little mix up in, in the back for the backs. Went, actually went, went the other way from the quarterback. And still the quarterback, Monica, made a great play, a uh, great throw. We've got to catch, got to catch the ball. Basham closed pretty well on it. Don't know if he did enough to disrupt it, but uh, he was the defender there for rights. And uh, Lowell will be forced to punt it away yet again. So Lowell needs something good to happen here. I mean, they, they need the defense step up and make a turnover. They need something good to happen to them. Work right now because Wright has everything going their direction. Lang is set to kick it away again. It's a pretty nice kick. Drives Hudson back to about the 38. He's wrapped up and dropped at the 40. 11.07 left in the first half. Wrights will get a chance for more, leading 14 to nothing. As we mentioned, defensively, as much as we're touting them, they have been known to give up some points. You need look no further than the regional and the semi-state. They gave up 34 to Cathedral. The gutsy call near the end and the regional against Columbus East. They outlasted them in regulation, 61 to 60. I thought that was a joke when I heard that, uh, when I heard that score, and it was just a, a slugfest and a shootout, and uh, Rice just was fortunate enough to come out on top. Tyler Julian on the carry, tries the right side, pick up a three, just shy of the 45. Yeah, what I'm anxious to see what, what, what Lowell does, because they're playing so much man-to-man -man on the receivers, there's not much other than start stunning and slanting that, that, that they can do up, up, up front, but they gotta do something to disrupt the timing of uh, rights. Second down at about seven. McIntosh again. Again. Tyler Julian. That's the one thing uh, when you're playing this type of offense, Lowell's got to got to start taking a little more chance, start moving their linemen around a little bit just to confuse them a little bit, just to just rub that timing. Because when they're in timing and, and in sync, boy, it, it's a long day for you. Third down and about four. This would be a huge stop for Lowell. McIntosh gonna keep it. Look for some running room left side. And boy, what a great tackle in the open field by Lucchese. My goodness. That he, was awesome. <laughs> I mean, I, that, that's something that, that, that Lowell needed probably more than anything this entire game was come up with some kind of stop on Wright's uh, 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 offense. And boy, TJ did a great job. It is not often that you see McIntosh brought down to the open field like that. Yeah. And lo and behold, Wrights will have to Try to get it on fourth down. McIntosh with the quick kick. Pretty good call there. Let their defense do some work. They'll down it at about the 29. I wasn't sure about that one. I said, oh my goodness. And then, you know, Coach Hart did a great job with the quick kick. And uh, McIntosh uh, executed that very, very well. Now, that was a big time stop by Lowell. And that was a big momentum changer. Need something positive to happen for them now. Again, I think Lowell's going to have to, to open up a little bit here probably and uh, to, to, to get a few more yards. First and 10 for Lowell. Boy, this could really turn into something positive for them off of that stop. If they can put together a nice sustained drive and get some points on the board here, it could very well change the whole complexion of this football game. On first and 10. Lowell does what they do, and that's run the football. They, that, that offensive line had a great surge at time, and I tell you what, tailback took it up in there and uh, took it off off the off the off the left side there. It was a nice uh, six or seven yard gain. He did pick up uh, six yards on the carry, in fact. Stephen Peck has four carries for 61 yards on the afternoon now. Nothing doing this time. Tyler Liso. Cody Midget. Into the ball game at halfback. One of the things that uh, the, the, the difference in, in the two teams right now is 
uh, Lowell is full flow. Wherever the fullback goes, for the most part, the tailback is, is going to follow him where Wright's more of a, mis uh, a misdirection. And so this, uh, uh, this is a great and a big time third down call here for uh, Kirk Kenny and Lowell. Peck is the single setback. Trips are lined up to the left. Huge play for Lowell, third and four, trying to keep their drive alive. Monix rolling right, has some room, throws it upfield into double coverage, and it's picked off. Nice open field tackle by Midget. There's a face here where Monix is probably just doing a little bit too much. Uh, he had a receiver open in, in the flat, probably a little bit of first down. You can't blame him, but you can't, you can't get impatient either. Houston Hobbs with the pick for Evansville Wrights, returning it to the 36-yard line. Okay, well, this, I tell you what, Lowell did this uh, did just a series ago, but, man, they need something big to, have, to happen to them here. It's, it's almost going to be the point. They also they, they almost need, need the defense to create turn, uh, turnover and score with it. Well, the receiver, uh, I think, could have worked a little harder as a DB almost to come back and try to knock that football away once he saw that it was going to be overthrown. And I'm sure that's something you work on time and time again. But uh, McIntosh doing what he does best. Flushed out of the pocket and turns it into a 14-yard game. And like I said earlier, there's nothing worse than watching a quarterback run and, and, and uh, Paul just um, um, improvised there. And Lowell had a great scheme there. Great, you know, had the hat, uh, had everything stop. Just a great play by McIntosh. Now we were curious as to why maybe timeouts weren't employed a little more strategically in that 3A title game. And I think uh, I think Kirk Kennedy is uh, employing a, a very strategic timeout here. He takes one, trying to settle his ball club down a little bit before this one gets away. We'll step out as well. 7.56 to play in the half, 14-0 rights. It's the 4A Football State Championship being presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air. It's on IHSAAsports.org. Hi, I'm Samantha Wright with WrightCounselingServices.com. There's a lot more pressure today growing up than there was even when I was growing up. Kids today are faced with so many things at such a young age. I'm one of those counselors that goes out there with a different train of thought. The school, the family, and the child all need to come together. And that's where I come in. I help give them a new path, help give them a new perspective so they can get down to the root of the issue and be able to come up with their own solution. College basketball stores. It was Evansville upending Ball State 51 50. Brown over Northwestern 73 67. Purdue 84. Loyola of Chicago 54 in the second half. Tonight, Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne at Indiana State at 7. Youngstown State at Notre Dame at 7 30. College football score, by the way, USC over Arizona State that final 44 24. Speaking of college basketball, do you think Bruce Weber gets a sick feeling in the pit of his stomach every time he sees a box score for an IU game? I tell you what, that Eric Gordon is awfully special. Uh, my son plays in a fourth grade league, and Eric's brother is in there, and they think he may be better. <laughs> and he is. Well, there's another one that, uh, that's is, at North Central this year. Right, yeah, but, the, but the young one is pretty daggone special. <laughs> How about that shot kid? Can he shoot it? Ah, uh, a lot better than, than, than was dad could. I'm going to tell you that much. <laughs> Not saying much. <laughs> Great run. Tyler Julian, as we mentioned, 1,200 yards rushing. I thought that, that was a great timeout by Kirk, and I think he was uh, encouraging his defense to uh, step up a little bit uh, and, and make a stop. And at this point, uh, uh, Evansville's making all the right calls. Gain of about seven, second and three. McIntosh, plenty of time in the pocket, finding Hudson is open first down inside the field. I'll tell you what, you give anybody a chance to, that much time to throw, to throw the football, especially somebody like McIntosh, they're going to find it. That, again, that credit goes to the offensive line. There is nobody around McIntosh. My goodness. If you flush him out of the pocket with, with, with your pass rush, if you don't have any semblance of contain on the outside, uh, that's all for naught because he's going he's gonna to bust it outside and pick up 10-15. Run a little option there. Julian gets some downfield blocking. 
Gets a couple of extra yards out of it, but a gain about nine. And how about Jeff Hudson blocking downfield? They what he's catching, he's blocking, he's doing it all. And uh, again, uh, credit to what Wright's doing. They're really making Lowell run sideline to sideline. And uh, we talked about this um, earlier. Wright's team speed is very, very good. And right now, that's showing to be the big difference, I would say, early on in, in this football game. Julian with 56 yards rushing. McIntosh with 56 yards rushing. That's not balance, is it? McIntosh takes off again. Stutter step move, trying to get to the outside and done. 10, 5, touchdown! Wow, what a great play individual by Paul McIntosh. That was impressive. Breaking two or three tackles there. That was just a, uh, a man on a mission. That was a great, great play by Paul McIntosh. Well, not only is Coach Hart going to be talking about coaching 10, 15 years from now, you and I may be talking <laughs> about watching it. Exactly. That's just something pretty, pretty, uh, pretty special right now that, 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 that we're witnessing. Point after blocked. 6.51 to play in the first half. Wrights has their foot on the throat of Lowell. Lowell has a faint pulse. They need to get off the carpet. We'll find out if they do that after we take this time out. You're watching the 4A Football State Championship presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAAsports.org. What is that? It's the most comprehensive coverage of Indiana high school sports ever. IHSAAsports.org will have live video coverage beginning with this year's high school football season. IHSAAsports.org will have audio and on-site blogs of all high school sports, photo galleries, editorials, score updates, and on-demand content. It's cutting edge. It's, it's on, on demand. demand. It's IHSAAsports.org. Relive the magic. And it's always been my opinion, there's swagger and there's confidence. I mean, I think swagger is almost selfishness. It's drawing attention to yourself individually. Uh, this football team is one that plays with confidence. You don't see a lot of chest bumping and a, you know, a lot of hip bumping and things like that you, you see out of a lot of other teams that uh, perform well. They certainly celebrate uh, their successes on the football field, but uh, Boy, this is as impressive of offensive football team as, as I've seen in quite some time. And I would agree. They are they are playing off the well. They're playing with a lot of confidence. When you play with confidence, you play a lot faster. And you play just a lot more passion. And it's just, you know, things tend to go your way because you're playing so hard and so fast. And that's what's happening right now to rights. Houston Hobbs set the, put a foot into it. Peck, Lukasik, and Roadruck among those deep. Stefan Peck, the recipient of a big lick. Put on by Sturdivant of Evansville Wrights. They'll spot it at the 21. And we talked about this uh, last series and even the series prior. You know, Lowell's got to do something here uh, just to kind of just to, just to hold, uh, hold them off and give the defense a chance to recover a little bit. Trips to the right. They'll run a toss sweep that way to Peck. Can't string it out any better than that. Well, that was a great job by the corner coming up and, and making sure they couldn't get the corner uh, on, on, on the play. And uh, Wright just ran to, to the ball and did a better job of getting to it than uh, Lowell, Lowell did blocking. Lucas White stepped up with run support to make that play possible. And uh, I, I will say this, if, if regardless of what happens, when that cluster of receivers gets gathered up for the film session, they're going to be told that's not quite the way to block that. I think right. Really didn't handle their assignments very well. Exactly, exactly. Toss to the left side, they'll fake the reverse. Try to get outside, turn it upfield. Not having much success is Cody Midget. I still like what Lowell did there. They tried to do a little misdirection by faking the, the, the reverse, which allows you know, Rice to slow down a little bit. 
and I think look for them to come back and run reverse or reverse pass off that just again just to slow Rice down just to try to make them you know be more accountable uh, to what has to has to happen on uh, all phases of, of the defense. Again, a third and long for Lowell. Monix looking right. Just threw it up for grabs and it was picked off. Had a receiver open and for some reason just tossed it up. And it was picked up and picked off by Houston Hobbs to return to the 25. Now obviously our sideline is much, much better halfway up. But boy, he had a man breaking free underneath. Roadruck all by his lonesome and he flat didn't seem. That was the second time, it was almost the same play call. And I think, uh, again, Mox kind of just wasn't, wasn't, wasn't real patient. And you don't like to see that uh, uh, in, in your quarterback. But uh, uh, give credit to Wrights as well. They had to defend him well. And uh, again, they made an, an, another big time play. Lowell has yet to convert a third down. Evansville Wrights, on the other hand, six of seven in third down conversion. Trips to the right. McIntosh sees the blitz in a hurry. Has all kinds of time and completes the pass out in the flat. I'll tell you what, what McIntosh did, did, did there. Lowell came after him. He just kept biding time, biding time. And, you know, again, they just couldn't get to him. And I asked, well, it's one of those things, how, how do you play him? If, if, if you blitz him, you can't get to him. If you don't, he picks you apart. That's, it's almost like pick, pick your poison. Ryan Williams, the recipient there, was open out the flat. He found him for a gain of three. McIntosh, 77 yards rushing. Tyler Julian, 56 yards rushing. Little fade route for the other McIntosh. Great throw and catch. Ryan holds it in for the touchdown. 22 yard touchdown pass. McIntosh to McIntosh. That was almost too easy. And, uh, you know, again, they, they put three receivers to one side and put the, other, put the young Mac, McIntosh all by himself. And I was just pitch and catch. I'm sure something they've done for many years. And, you know, as, as, as a parent, it's got to be a dream for their parents to watch that happen and watch both uh, sons to, to just play at, at, at a very high level right now. 38 receptions, 527 yards, seven touchdowns, averaging 13 yards per catch. Great job, Paul. Paul put, put the ball where, where only he, he, he could catch it, and his brother did a great job of coming down with it. Busy man this half has been Houston Hobbs. This time they're going for two. Hobbs doesn't release. They throw it into the end zone, and it's knocked away. Pass was intended for Nicholas Kaffenberger, and it was incomplete. 26-0 with 4.57 left in the first half. Right to the driver's seat. Back after this, you're watching the 4A Football State Finals presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air. It's on IHSAAsports.org. temperatures are just around the corner. Will your system keep you warm? Dial One Hour will show up for your appointment on time or the service call is free. Don't waste your time. Call the experts at Dial One Hour today. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial One Hour. Dial One Going to pack the gear up, but only for a day or two. We're going to get ready for Hoosier Hysteria on IHSAAsports.org. It all gets underway Tuesday night. Yours truly and Bob Lovell will head to Perry Meridian High School. This Perry Meridian takes on the Southport Cardinals. That'll be a, a big showdown. Be a great crowd on hand for that one. Join us at 7 p.m. on IHSAAsports.org. Exciting boys and girls high school basketball action all season long including the tournament for boys and girls basketball. You can catch us weekly. 7 p.m. the first one, Tuesday, Southport and Perry Meridian on IHSAAsports.org. Kirk Kennedy and, uh, and the Lowell uh, Red Devils need to find a way to, to make some points here because uh, Rice looked, uh, looked like they're, they're going to slow, slow down much. Kasich, Road Ruck, Stephen Peck, all deep. Peck the return man. Again, some room to the 21, wrapped up and dropped by Matthew McIntosh. 
a freshman McIntosh, who's 5'10", 160. I'll tell you what, it likes to have uh, three three boys like like that. If they all, all act, act like Paul, I know his parents are, or their parents are very, very proud. I meant to talk to uh, Dave Pass from North Putnam, our analyst yesterday on the one and two way. I think there's 250 Bondasars out there in Putnam County, and they all <laughs> seem to play for him, and they're all very talented. Well, that's the way we were with Stanford for a while at Monrovia. They uh -huh. just kept coming. We have a couple more there now. Joe and Jordan and Jessica. A set of triplets who are juniors. Great kids. And, uh, boy, it's nice when families like that come along in their community, especially when they're great families. Exactly. Benjamin on the carry uh, pushes the pile forward to the 25. They may spot him closer to the 24. Now we see that a lot with the parochial schools where they're in a situation where, you know, Pappas, I know there's got to be, or Kleinsmith, there's got to be a lot right. of those that, 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 that have gone through the Chattars, the Roncalli's, uh, the, the, the cathedrals. And, you know, it is neat because they keep coming, and, and you know, just one, once, you, once you get a great family line in there, boy, it's, it's, it's neat to coach, to coach all of them. And as you mentioned earlier, with some of the teams we played at Chattar, not only brothers, but second-generation families. That's always great to see. Yes. So it, as as a as a football coach, we love second, third boys and second, third uh, uh, gen generation because they have an idea of how to play how to play the game and, and what's expected. And I'm sure that that's the same thing that uh, you got with the Santa Fe's. I think that's a that's a real big deal. Peck on the carry, no gain to the 22. And again, third down and eight. It seems like it, they're always faced with third and eight. You, you haven't seen a third and one or a third and two. Second and one, second and two, and uh, that really puts you behind the eight ball. Uh, they've yet to convert on third down here. Three and a half to go in the first half. The reverse will pass. He's all by himself. It's all by himself. And it's a foot race now. Pass is completed to T.J. Lucchese, and it looks like he's going to get to the end zone. That's a nice pull. and could serve as some momentum, getting them to the locker room at halftime. Again, uh, Kirk needs something good to happen to him. That was a great play call again. A little misdirection. Uh, allowed them a little more time to throw to throw the ball. Uh, great execution. Those plays always look great when they happen. Uh, but that takes a lot of work. Uh, Lowell's done a great job preparing their kids. What a great time to call that, that play. Really caught Rice kind of flat-footed. And uh, that, that was a well-executed by Lowell and Kirk Kenny and, and his team. Coach, I, I'm not so sure you don't go in the locker room and maybe pull out uh, in, in your locker room uh, speech the fact that they gave up 60 points in the regional and 34 at the semi-state. You need to let your kids know you can score on them if you'll just run your offense. I agree, and I think the biggest thing right now is they've got to come back and do and do that again just to give the kids a little more hope and it, it wasn't just a fluke thing because uh, uh, Wrights has been known to give them a few points. Ball is down, kick is up, and good. 26-7. 318 to play in the half. You're watching the 4A Football State Finals presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAASports.org. Coming soon. Yes, the new WIBC. Please fire it Jeez, up. I think it was a tear shed. January 7th, we go to 93.1 FM. The new WIBC. Keep listening as the excitement builds and the tales unfold. Cool. The yeah. new WIBC. Oh, this is just marvel. This is great. Yeah. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial One Hour Air. Welcome back. 318 left in the first half. Good news, bad news for Lowell. Good news is they're on the board. They score to make it 26-7. Bad news is you give Wrights the opportunity to get the football back with 318 left on the clock and three timeouts. Well, this is going to be um, really interesting, especially for uh, Co uh, Coach Hart. Uh, Nick Hart, his son, which has got to be a great thrill for, for him, uh, calls the offense. And uh, it be interesting to see what uh, Rice decides to do here. Uh, they have shown all season long that they keep going. And this is going to be a big challenge for Lowell now. They don't want to give up um, anything big here, but it's uh, – it's a situation that uh, uh, they can they can ill afford to give up another touchdown here to uh, McIntosh. Looks like they're going to kick the ball uh, far left. 52, David Lang sets it up that way. Puts a boot into it. It's a high kick. Going to force Julian back to the five. Has some running on the right side. 
Thank goodness for contain. I'll tell you what, Jillian's a pretty good player. <laughs> Stephen Peck wrapped him up, shoved him out of bounds at around the 44. I thought Lowell did a great job of, of holding him and, keep, and keeping him in containing. He just found a little space and uh, Peck did, did a great job of, of using sideline as the uh, 12th man there to, uh, to run him out of bounds. Coach Kennedy, not real happy. We didn't see the flag, but there is one across the way. And uh, Lowell is going to be the beneficiary of an illegal block. I think Coach Kennedy is probably was a little concerned about his player not keeping contained. And I think that's again goes back to your players doing their job every time. And that is as easy as that is. Uh, sometimes is uh, very difficult for uh, these 16, 78, 18 year old kids to do. And he wasn't employing. That's okay. You'll do better next time. <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> no, I think uh, Kirk's a little concerned right right now, as 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 he should be. McIntosh to Julian. Running room of 20 to the 30. Pick up of 12. Luke Kasich on the tackle. Well, they're going to run it here, but I would look the way they're playing their defensive right now. Their, their secondary looks for their, another fade uh, or a streak route to... Uh, uh, to be called. There's not a lot of help there. I think when you pick up 13 on the ground on first and 10, that's that is a bonus, certainly. Now they set up a screen, and that was defended very, very well by Dave Eastling, the linebacker. That was. They're going to call that a caught, a catch, rather, a fumble, and a fumble recovery, and that is huge. I think it was more of, of an interception. I can't tell by the look, but I think when in the path of the ball ricocheted off the receiver's hands. We're right. looking at the replay now. It did go off the receiver's hands. Yeah, that, that's right. Luke Kasich was right there, Johnny on the spot, and it fell right into his arms. He was lying on the ground when the ball <laughs> fell into his arms. Exactly. Great play. Great heads up awareness of where the ball was. Monix and company, I formation. Little mix up in the backfield and Monix pays the price. Somebody went the wrong way. Now Brandon Grubby, their 1600 yard rusher injured in the first half and we have not seen him since he was hurt. Cody Midget has been handling the tailback chores. He has a uh, couple of carries for three yards. Most of the rushing offense coming from Stefan Peck. He has six carries for 62 yards. And I think the mix-up was on the part of Cody Mitchell. Loss of a couple there, and how huge it would be for Lowell if they could strike Paynard here. Split backs this time on second and 12. Monix looking, pocket collapsing. Nice throw underneath to Midget. Leaked out of the backfield and has positive yards down inside the 25 to the 24. I think we're definitely in four, in four down territory here where, where, where you've got two downs to make about three yards. That flat has been wide open all game. That was a great job that time by the quarterback. It's a big, big third down play here. It's his first completion. Monix on third down. Look at that pile. A late surge. Pushing the pile forward, Cody Midget, the ball carrier, and uh, in terms of who was in on the tackle, you picked. <laughs> I think that was the entire front front eight people of uh, of Evansville rights, and that's a that's tough going right right now. When you're going to just play power football, they're winning the battle of uh, up front. Uh, fourth and short should be interesting here. Just shy of the 22, they need to go just shy of the 21. Does, uh, does Monix use maybe the hard snap out here? See if you can catch him pinning her ears back and coming hard. I think you got to use a long snap count here or a quick one. One or the other, just don't let him get, get set. Little toss sweep. Not going to happen. You're not going to get outside of this football team very often with very much success. 
Houston Hobbs was there. Chris Fisher from his outside linebacker position. Fisher, a guy with seven sacks on the season. Gambled and lost. That was a great job again. Boy, this Rice gets the ball quick. I want to tell you, I am real impressed just the way of, of their, their, old, their overall team speed is just uh, uh, very, very good, to say the least. Boy, a little play action to that fullback. Might have frozen that outside linebacker just enough if you're going to go to the corner, maybe option out of that. But boy, to just try to run a toss sweep on sure. fourth and short on rights is a daunting task. I think Coach uh, Candy again is going to you know, dance with, with what brought him, and you can't blame him for doing that. But right now, it's like, uh -oh. McIntosh finds some space across the 35 to the 36. That ball almost never got off the ground. He picked it right off the shoelaces. The hole was there, and he went. It's a great job again up front by the Wrights linemen. Uh, they really are creating uh, seams for, uh, uh, for, for McIntosh and, and Julian to run the ball. And this is real big. There's 29 seconds here. This, this is real big to, to keep them out. Timeout on the field. Let's step away real quick. 29 seconds left. 26-7. Wrights has the football. The 4A state championship presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAAsports.org. Hi, I'm Samantha Wright with WrightCounselingServices.com. There is a lot more pressure today growing up than there was even when I was growing up. Kids today are faced with so many things at such a young age. I'm one of those counselors that goes out there with a different train of thought. The school, the family, and the child all need to come together. And that's where I come in. I help give them a new path, help give them a new perspective so they can get down to the root of the issue and be able to come up with their own solution. Twenty-six seven your score with twenty-nine ticks left on the clock. McIntosh and company out of the gun. Flushed out of the pocket. Has some running room, still on his feet, breaks one tackle, then another. Finally wrapped up and dropped by the, from behind by Jeff Barker after a gain of about seven, and again a timeout taken. Tell you what, one thing McIntosh has done is kept his poise on all those low snaps. Uh, those balls have been off, off, off the ground. He's done a nice job of just keeping his poise and, and keeping his head up and looking downfield. If all goes well, continues to go the direction that it's going, the record for first downs could fall by the wayside. It's 24 by DeKalb versus Franklin Central. <laughs> that was... Uh, back in 1986 and Evansville writes with 15 first downs in the first half to just two for Lowell the uh, overall record 29 by Warren Central. I was asking you about the shadow cast by coach Stevens at Franklin Central the 86 team a team of his winning titles in 80, 81, and 82. You say you get tremendous support from him. Hey, well, I could not have asked for a better mentor there. And Chuck Stevens, he is fantastic. He's a great friend of the family. And, to, and he, he wants Franklin Central to do well. And whether it's me or whoever, he wants uh, he, um, he wants a program of kids to succeed. Straight draw again by McIntosh. Good enough for the first down to the 50. He won the 4A title in 1990. That was a rematch with Holbert. Won that one 34-14 after losing the year before 17-7. Four of five seasons during that run, Franklin set won the title game. McIntosh aired it out, looking for the deep ball. Has it got open if it's Julian, and it slipped through the wickets. He almost hauled that in. That was the uh, only place that he put the ball. That was a great throw. Uh, Julian almost uh, brought it down. And uh, tell you what, they're not uh, resting on this 26-7 lead, and I give him credit for that. He chucked that from about the, what, 39, 38-yard line. Just and it went over his head of the 10. Yeah. Well, McIntosh has a great arm. And, uh, and like I said, they're doing a nice job here of just taking what, what they're giving them. And I would be surprised to see, this, see the same play again. Hudson coming in motion. They'll throw it to him out the flat. Three ticks left on the clock. Well, 
That was a nice job again. They're trying to get him a little closer and closer here. I think they're going to take one more stab at, 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 at this thing and throw it up there because, as we just saw a second ago, McIntosh certainly has the arm to get it there. <laughs> that is almost not fair. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is an equalizer. Actually, it gives you an advantage. Hey, big deal here, Lowell. Go, go put pressure on them. Go give them. They're not going to run the ball here. The linebackers aren't doing anything. He takes a shot, chucks He's it got to the end zone. Who comes down with it? No one. Lowell defended that pretty well. They had plenty of bodies there. It was three on three. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. They work on it in practice every day. Nonetheless, 26 7, Wright's leading Lowell as they head toward the locker room. We'll be back in just a few minutes. It's a 15 minute halftime. Rejoin us. For the second half, you're watching the Class 4A Football State Finals presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAAsports.org. You know what's cool? A perfect spiral. A beautifully run pass route. An open field shoestring tackle. You know what isn't cool? Complaining to the officials. Criticizing your teammates. Showing up the other team's players. It may be intense, it may be emotional, but it's only a game. The Indiana High School Athletic Association reminds you of these sportsmanship tips. When an official makes a call, accept it. When a member of the opposing team makes a great play, applaud it. When an opponent extends a hand after the game, shake it. It's only a game. Play it cool. Practice sportsmanship. High school sports, pure spirit, pure sport. This message brought to you by the Indiana High School Athletic Association. temperatures are just around the corner. Will your system keep you warm? Dial One Hour will show up for your appointment on time or the service call is free. Don't waste your time. Call the experts at Dial One Hour today. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial One Hour. Dial One Coming soon. The yes, new WIBC. Please fire I think it was a tear shed. January 7th, we go to 93.1 FM. The new WIBC. <laughs> Keep listening as the excitement builds and the tales unfold. Cool. The yeah. new WIBC. Oh, this is just marvelous. This is great. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Lovell, the host of Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk. Join me Friday night right after the game for Indiana Sports Talk as we give you the scores and the coaches' reactions from around the state. Scores every 15 minutes and coaches' comments every Friday on Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk. What is that? It's the most comprehensive coverage of Indiana high school sports ever. IHSAAsports.org will have live video coverage beginning with this year's high school football season. IHSAAsports.org will have audio and on-site blogs of all high school sports, photo galleries, editorials, score updates, and on-demand content. It's cutting edge. It's, it's on, on demand. demand. It's IHSAAsports.org. Relive the magic. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial One Hour Air. Hi, I'm Samantha Wright with WrightCounselingServices.com. There's a lot more pressure today growing up than there was even when I was growing up. Kids today are faced with so many things at such a young age. I'm one of those counselors that goes out there with a different train of thought. The school, the family, and the child all need to come together. And that's where I come in. I help give them a new path, help give them a new perspective so they can get down to the root of the issue and be able to come up with their own solution. Time to start feeling nervous. Time to break out the face paint. Time to overanalyze the brackets. Time to hit the road with the team. Time to completely lose your mind. Time to shave your head. What time is it, Indiana? Tournament time! time. High school tournament time holds a special place in the hearts of most Hoosiers. It turns the mild-mannered into the hot-blooded. It sends you and me and everybody we know into unimaginable states of ecstasy. 
It's hard on the blood pressure, but good for the soul. It's always a thrill, and it's never the same thrill twice. It's also a great time to practice good sportsmanship. So what are you waiting for, Indiana? It's tournament time. Get out there and support the high school in your community. High school sports, pure spirit, pure sport. This message brought to you by the Indiana High School Athletic Association. All photographs, film, videotape, and audio tape of, and all broadcast title and broadcast rights for IHSAA tournament events are the exclusive property of the Indiana High School Athletic Association Incorporated. No IHSAA event may be copied, reproduced, rebroadcast, or used in any manner without the express written consent of the Indiana High School Athletic Association Incorporated.
Welcome back to the RCA Dome in downtown Indianapolis, where at halftime in the 4A title game, Wrights leads Lowell 26 to 7. Mark James, along with Franklin Central head football coach Lance Scheib, and coach, take us into the locker room of uh, the Lowell Red Devils at halftime. A score late in the first half uh, to get themselves on the board. They trail 26 7. First two possessions for them, I'm, I'm sure their coaching staff views as vital to have any chance to get back into it the second half. Well, I think you go in there, and I and I think, again, you talk to your kids about what got us here. You know, are we doing with what got us here? And, and right now, that really hadn't happened. They haven't been able to run, run the ball. Uh, Grand, they lost a the tailback, and I think that's a big deal. And I think, you know, the biggest thing that they've got to get back to doing is what, is what Lowell does best, and that is stopping the run, uh, containing what – what McIntosh does, and I think you know, the biggest thing is getting back to being better up front. And right now, Wrights is winning that battle. And when you can't run, you know, run the ball. Uh, I, I don't care what level that you're playing at, things are going to go, uh, you know, not not real smoothly for you. And I think you know, Kirk probably uh, had some encouraging words uh, in many forms, and I think uh, uh, probably challenged his seniors, uh, challenged his football team to. Uh, to produce more than two first downs like they have right now. Anytime you have two first downs for the first half, uh, I don't care where you're at and, and, who, and who you're playing, you're not going to have a lot of success. Brandon Grubby, the outstanding 1,600-yard rusher, injured in the first half. Uh, pretty severe fracture of the arm. Uh, put the oxygen on him because uh, he was feeling awfully faint because of the severity of the injury. Put him on the cart. Uh, just to settle him down a little bit, get him off the field in, in, in one piece. So uh, certainly our, our thoughts and best wishes with him. Again, he was conscious, he was alert, but uh, you know, obviously in a great deal of pain because of the severity of the injury. And uh, it's a tough, tough task to replace a 1,600-yard rusher. But that's exactly the task that uh, Lowell is faced with here in the second half this afternoon. I'll tell you what, I've been through that. Uh, 2002, we we were 10 and 0 playing Warren Central in the, in the sectional final, and my tailback had run for about 1,800 yards. Uh, second series, they break his ankle. Uh, they land on him, wasn't anything on purpose, and it, it just shakes your kids. It shakes your confidence of, of your football team uh, more than really than than, than what I realize in looking back now uh, and what and what and what happened. And, it, and, and it's hard to back you know, to to bounce back when you see your your bread and butter, your guy that has been there all year, all of a sudden he's not there. Uh, coach can say a lot, but in all reality, that's hard to recover from. Cost Shatar to trip the state championship one year at your place when they played Heritage Hills when Dre Mason went down in yes. the first half. They didn't recover from that. It's hard. It really is. Well, Wrights will get the football to start the second half. On the return is Jeff Hudson. Pretty good coverage. That time by Lowell, and Wrights will start the football first to 10 from the 30. I do remember one time when it was a coming out party of sorts. It was right here at the Dome when Marcus Nally was hurt uh, in the first half, and Bruce Cyprus dispatched some kid from the sidelines by the name of Tim Sergi, and uh, he romped his way right into the hearts of the Ron Colley Rebels, and... Uh, and, and boy, picked them up huge that day. Yes, he did. Tim is a great guy, great family. Frank is our, his dad is our uh, assistant principal, and I remember that game vividly and saw Tim come out as a sophomore and just do some great things. Cluster of four to the right side, do a pretty nice job of blocking. Straight keeper by Paul McIntosh, works his way around the end and is able to pick up a whole big bunch. 12, in fact, on the carry. Chased out of bounds at the 42. And uh, with that, uh, he's in triple digits and rushing on the afternoon. 14 carries for 114 yards. It's really hard for Lowell to defend that because the receivers are playing press coverage, which means they're up close, and then they're running with the receivers, and here, and here comes McIntosh. Plenty of running room for Tyler Julian. Started toward the middle of the field, saw a little lane, had Showed the tremendous vision there on the cutback, finding the running lane and pushing the sticks forward after a pickup of 10. That's not exactly the way the low one wanted to start to half, and I give uh, uh, Wrights all the credit here. They're doing a great job of putting low in the situation uh, that they don't want to be in here. Empty backfield, five receivers set for McIntosh. 
Again, they check the defense, then look over for the call. For the quarterback <laughs> to keep it here. I'd say Paul's going to keep the ball. Nope, he's going to throw it. And throws it underneath. Pass complete to Tyler Julian, just a little five yard out after the uh, wide receiver Ryan McIntosh cleared out the underside for him by going straight up the field. Yeah, that, that empty backfield has got is a great set for uh, Wrights because it empties really low out of their their base uh, defense and now it gives Wrights an advantage to run football with, with McIntosh. Pick up a five second and five. Again low snap. Julian again with a carry tripped up across the 40. Justin Juarez from his linebacker spot there to help make the tackle pick up of two and a half maybe three. It's a third down and two. Tyler Julian, 13 carries for 83 yards on the afternoon. 18 first downs now for Evansville Rice, just two for Lowell. Straight keeper, actually. Handoff off the dive. Looked like he was going to keep it. Julian gets the football and is close to a first down. That was a nice adjustment there by Lowell. They put a fifth defensive lineman down. Just to give a different look. And again, they're still going to play with six guys from tackle to tackle, but they almost played like a 5 1 where they bumped the, uh, the the one linebacker up just to give a different look. And that was a ni nice adjustment by, uh, by Lowell. Fourth down, length of the football. Look at that. That's unbelievable. All kinds of motion and no flag. Paul McIntosh pushes the pile forward. Gets the first down after he turns the corner. Coach Candy, I'm probably a little excited there because, in the fact, you can't move towards the line of scrimmage and snap the ball. Uh, that's uh, Canadian rules football is good, but not necessarily in Indiana. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, they had that little <laughs> cluster, and they brought them in over behind the garden tackle, and they were clearly moving forward before the ball was snapped. And, well, you wonder if the officials didn't quite know what to call because they're not used to seeing something sure, like that. Sure, that's great. Yeah, that's a great analogy. And that's just, you know, again, you, you just don't see it. I just think uh, the quarterback, uh, McIntosh, just snapped a little, a little early. Uh, but, again, that was a great overload and great call on fourth down. And a lot of coaches would love to have Mac, um, McIntosh as their quarterback. Tyler Julian on the carry off the toss sweep. Gets to the outside and picks up about eight. He's knocking on the door of being a 100-yard rusher as well. He has 15 carries for 93 yards, 121 yards for McIntosh. Looking to throw here. Has a man open in the end zone all by his lonesome. Tyler Julian, and he overthrew him. It's a case where Paul just has too strong an arm, and uh, it was a great pressure by Lowell. Again, I think that's the answer right now that Lowell's got to try to find a little bit more uh, ways to pressure him from the outside in to keep him inside the pocket a little bit. Uh, because uh, Julian was all by, by himself on one-on-one -on, -one on a uh, on a wheel route where he turned up, up the sideline and then go up, up uh, field on a linebacker. 9.20 left in period three. 26 to seven in favor of Wrights. They're looking to add more here. Threatening on third and three. McIntosh trips to the right, which is the short side. A run that way, not out of the question. Decides the straight draw. Pretty good penetration by the interior defensive Lowell. And the spot has him short. I'll tell you what, I really like what Lowell's doing now. They're, they're going down to five down linemen, which doesn't allow uh, uh, Evans or Rice to move their linemen around and stuff. And that's really uh, been a problem uh, for Rice up to this point. Brian DeSummer on the tackle, stepping up. Fourth down, length of the football. They make some changes offensively. Christopher Deeg in there at fullback. They line up that same cluster. McIntosh finds some room. Just kind of slides down the line of scrimmage till he sees a seam and pushes the pile forward and picks up the first down. At that time, uh, McIntosh gave him a little more time to get set. Uh, that's hard. They're over, they're over overloading uh, from a defense standpoint. They just got more people than, than, than what you do. And when that happens, they're, they're going to normally move the pile a little bit and have to get a first down. 20th first down of the ball game, and again, just two for Lowell. 26-7, your score, Wright's knocking on the door. Look at this, an old-fashioned eye formation. Something different. Toss sweep to Tyler Julian looking for the corner. Not a bad job of stringing that out, you think, but then you look up and realize they still got four or five out of it, which you'll take on first down. 
that was a nice job of keeping contained by by the by the low corner to, to, to make sure he couldn't turn turn up uh, uh, to make more yards. But tell you what, when you're getting five and six yards a pop, it's uh, it's pretty hard to defend that. That was Luke Casey calling that stop. It's the second and five for rights now from the 15. Tyler Julian, the single setback. Julian McIntosh take the option to Julian find some room left side after he saw the end go crashing down on the play fake kept it got to the corner got the first down to bring up the first and goal that was a great play by Lucas White he came in there he was uh, that that was a game star a, a touchdown save saving tackle and he uh, he uh, let uh, McIntosh know that, that that he was there 18 carries 131 yards rushing for this outstanding quarterback Julian in the backfield. McIntosh rolling right. Has a receiver open and overthrew it. Uh, again, when you give uh, any quarterback some time, they're going to normally make make you pay there. And uh, that was a nice little play uh, play action there by uh, Evansville Wrights. Uh, low, it was well defended. Uh, the receiver was open. Uh, Paul just barely over, over overthrew it. Gander, the intended target. Second and goal from the seven. 7.46 mark of the third quarter. McIntosh looking for the corner, wrapped up and dropped. Pretty good penetration there. Jeff Barker, the defensive end, slides up to make that tackle. What a great job by Lowell. Uh, they had done something like that earlier where they were playing uh, a lot closer, and thus they couldn't support from the outside. Lowell back the receipt or the DBs off a little bit. The defensive backs off, and they were able to come up and, and keep contained and gave the uh, linebackers a chance to, to make a play. Great adjustment by the Lowell defense staff. Boy, a loss of one. Not a very good spot there from Lowell's perspective. Not a very good spot at all. McIntosh on third and goal from the eight. Drops back, looking left, looking left, now looking over the middle. Pass caught the end zone. Did he get in? Touchdown. To Jeff Hudson. Well, well, the well designed play. Uh, just a little uh, four receivers on one side. And they all crossed. And uh, Hudson just sat there right down uh, on the goal line. Great presence to know where he had where he had to get to. Uh, nice play by uh, Evansville Wrights. Sixty-four yards passing, 19 carries for 130 yards rushing. Paul McIntosh, Tyler Julian, 16 carries for 98 yards. D, three carries for 25 yards. Hudson, eight catches, 74 yards. McIntosh, one for 22. That's a, a touchdown catch, by the way. That was another nice, methodical drive by uh, Ev Evansville Wrights. Ball is down, kick is up, and it is good. Seven minute mark of period three. Wrights in command, 33 7. Back after this, you're watching 4 8 football state finals presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAA Sports.org. temperatures are just around the corner. Will your system keep you warm? Dial One Hour will show up for your appointment on time or the service call is free. Don't waste your time. Call the experts at Dial One Hour today. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial One Hour. Dial One Hour Air. Be sure to nominate the Dial 1 Scholar Athlete, the $1,000 scholarship given to one male and one female Scholar Athlete every month of the 2007-2008 school year. Nominate your student athlete today on IHSAASports.org. Don't forget high school basketball just around the corner. Yours truly and Coach Lovell head to Southport at Perry Meridian. It'll be at Perry Meridian High School Tuesday night, 7 o'clock the start time. 
uh, for the Cardinals and the Falcons. Again, yours truly, Bob Level, Tuesday night, high school basketball, all season long, here on IHSAAsports.org. It's the 4A title game, their score, 6.59 left in period three, 33 to seven, Lowell, already crowned three champions. In 1A, Sheridan wins their record ninth, Bud Wright's record ninth, 34-28 over Rockville. Also yesterday, Lures over Heritage Christian, 21-6. Chittard joins Sheridan atop the heap with their ninth state championship as they beat South Bend St. Joe's today, 31 to seven. And it's a triple header. We have one more to play after this one. We need to crown a 5A state champion as well. We'll have all the action for you as Pike takes on Mo Moriarty and the Carmel Greyhounds. And Mo looking to join a very elite fraternity of coaches uh, the few who have been fortunate enough to win state championships at two different schools. Of course, he had great teams at Bloomington South before joining the staff at Indiana University. He left college coaching, returned to the high school ranks, and Carmel has been the beneficiary of that. Nice return on the ensuing kickoff. That's Stephen Peck, who really has been one of the few bright spots offensively on the afternoon for Lowell. Pushes the football out across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. Unfortunately, the big plays that come from a little bit on the kickoff return. The problem is there's been too many of them. <laughs> you know, situation they've, they've, they've done a nice job of getting the ball close to the 30, uh, but they just need to now sustain drives here to try to give the defense a chance to, to rest a little bit. Yeah, to give you an indication, Lowell has 115 yards in kickoff returns. Six kickoff returns for 115 yards. That is uh, a capsule right there of what's happened today. Peck on the carry, nothing doing around the right side. Zach Kissel on the tackle. So you want to give a lot of credit to the right defense. Uh, they've done a great job of, of understanding what they're trying to get accomplished here and what they're trying to take away and putting a lot of pressure uh, on Monik uh, to, to, to make plays. And at times he has, and at, time, and at times he hasn't. No gain, second and 10. Monix looks to throw, pressure from the outside, throws it over the middle. The pass is complete to Jeff Wentworth, and he finds some running room and gets just the third first down of the afternoon for Lowell as he's dropped at the 40. I'll tell you what, it was a nice job, Monix. He did a great job, Ke uh, kept his poise, nice play call. And again, they took advantage of uh, Evansville Rice getting out of there to uh, cover the receivers. And he was all by himself right, right over the football. First and ten. Haven't had an opportunity to say that very often for a little this afternoon. No, we've not. High formation. This time they try a little reverse with the slot. It's a pretty nice call. Nice result, if you will. Lukasik on the carry around the right side. Going to pick up about six. Tell you what, any time that Lowell has kind of done any kind of misdirection, they've really had some decent success. And I just feel like that's a great job of Coach Kenny making a few adjustments here, uh, giving his kids a little better chance here, uh, just, you know, just to, to succeed. I think, you know, they've done so much where, where rights are just flowing. I think uh, any kind of misdirection helps. Second and four, under five and a half to play in the third quarter. Penalty marker is down, little movement. Up front. A young man uh, that is about a foot from the ball jumps off sides. Happens to us all the time. Not quite sure how that happens, but it well, does. Well, you should <laughs> work on that in practice. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't that. cover that with your kids enough, I'm uh, sure. Yeah, that's that. Again, I just said I'm, all, I'm always amazed when the nose tackle man <laughs> close to the ball jumps. So you know what? But it happens at all levels, and uh, it, it happened there for, for Evansville Wrights. Like they say, when you win, it's the kids. When you make mistakes and get beat, it's coaches. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that penalty of five yards, good enough for a first down. Little mix up in the backfield. And credit Monix, uh, panic mode set in, and he spun around just looking for a seam, was able to find one, and did gain positive yards, albeit two and a half. That was a nice job of making uh, a negative play in, into, into, into a positive one. I think that's a big deal. Uh, Again, he kept his poise and did a great job. Fortunately, with your program at Franklin Central, you don't find yourself in these situations like Lowell's in too often. 
but when you do, sometimes you got to coach a lot harder now, uh, obviously, than you do when you're up 33-7. Exactly, and I think that's probably the biggest thing right now is, is you know, the, you know, the Lowell, Lowell has lost his swagger, has lost his confidence. And when a team loses confidence, it's, it's, it's hard to keep going because you're trying, you know, now Kirk has I've been in this situation, un, unfortunately, um, a lot. And it's, you, you, you almost start grab bagging where you're just pulling things out, trying to make something happen here, especially when you lose your best player, you, you're running back, you're, your heart and soul, just, you know, just from, just from that standpoint. That, that's difficult to come back from. Pass to Peck was incomplete. It's third down and eight for Lowell. Four and a half to play in the third quarter. Monix throws it out the flat to Midget. Little screen pass. Pretty good open field tackle. Chris Dig, 138 tackles on the season. Wrapped him up and dropped him before he could get the first down. Well, I tell you what, that's we talked about the right to team speed earlier. I thought that was a great design play. He was, I mean, I thought that was going to have a chance to go for big yardage. It barely got about four four yards. That team speed of rights is really showing. Lowell going to try to put their defense to work. They will kick the football the way. Jeff Hudson drops deep. David Lane to kick it away. Good snap. Plenty of time. High kick. Hudson fields it at the 13, fumbles it, and Lowell recovers it at the 13-yard line. Lowell needs something good, good, good to happen. That was a big-time play there. Ben hustling, Rigby on the recovery. Hustling down, down, uh, downfield, and a young man from Wrights uh, had, has not done too many things wrong uh, all, all game, but uh, in that case there, the ball slipped through his hands. Hudson now being told, uh, look, a fair catch isn't a bad thing there. And I, and I would agree, especially where, where he was in timing of, of, of the game. Uh, big chance for Lowell here. 33-7 your score, three and a half to play in period three. Lowell with the football threatening. They trail it for a title game. Pretty good run. Midget running behind David Lang, Josh Hayden, and Brian DeMario. Jeff Barker are also lined up on that side, offering a little assistance. Pickup of about six, second and four. That's a great push by the uh, front of, of Lowell. Uh, give Midget a chance to run the ball there, and he did a great job. Cody Midget. Just 11 yards on five carries. They'll try him again. Cuts back inside and gets upended after a gain of one. Still not sure that I'm going to make a living running against uh, the Wrights defense uh, just straight ahead. They've done a, a nice job of time to time, but for the most part, Wrights have done a great job of responding uh, when they had to. Weininger on the tackle. The right defensive end. Third down and three. Ball's on the seven. They'll dispatch twins to the right. High formation. Wentworth, the fullback. Bridget again tripped up as he turned the corner. Linebacking course stepping up Mason Stroud and others to make that tackle. Chris Deeg also there. That was definitely a call unless they were probably looking at, 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 at uh, three yards for uh, two plays. And now they've got three yards again or two yards. And uh, it's a great job by Rice to come up and make a great, great, yeah. great stop. Maybe He's, the length of the football for a game, not much else. All right. All right. Minute 40, period three, breaking the huddle, staring at a fourth and two at a 33-7 deficit. Gut check time for Lowell. Pressure. They throw it underneath. Caught. Touchdown. Wow, what a great catch, great throw. Lukasic, TJ Lukasic on the touchdown catch. All kinds of pressure, and Monix showing uh, plenty of poise and patience there, waiting on the receiver to come open, letting just enough for the touchdown catch. That was a great play call. Great situation where your kids ex executed. That was a game of inches there where the, the DB was probably two or three inches away from making that an interception going back 100, um, 100 yards. Lang will attempt the point after. 
in an attempt to make it 33 to 14. Ball is down, kick is up, and it is good. Minute 23 left in period three, 33 14 in favor of Evansville Wrights. Back after this, you're watching the Class 4A Football State Championship presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air, and it's on IHSAA Sports. Dot org. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Lovell, the host of Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk. Join me Friday night right after the game for Indiana Sports Talk as we give you the scores and the coaches' reactions from around the state. Scores every 15 minutes and coaches' comments every Friday on Network Indiana's Indiana Sports Talk. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial One Hour Air. Taking advantage of the mishandled punt. The fumble recovery by Lowell leads to a touchdown a couple of plays later. 33 to 14, your score with a minute 23. In period three, a team in Lowell that won a state championship in 2005. And how much credit do you give to Kirk Kennedy uh, for the fact that his ball club continues to stand in there and swing away uh, despite the fact the scoreboard is tilted for now heavily in the favor of, of Wright. Speaks well for his ball club at Lowell. Knowing Kirk the way, the way I do, I, I would expect nothing less. Nice kick. Comes down into the hands of Hudson. Hudson tries to find some running room at camp. Four defenders, five defenders there on top of the football. It is just amazing when, when something good happens in sports, what it does to your overall team spirit and what it does to your pep and your step and how you approach things. That was a great job of coverage, excitement. Kids are jumping around for Lowell. You know, they've got the momentum. I'm not sure if they, they can turn this thing, but I tell you what, they've got mo mo momentum going their way. Lucas Palmer on the tackle. Officials meeting at the uh, 20. Looked like they were. They're holding a play because an official is having trouble with his glasses. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> I think he uh, got knocked over and all the uh, and, and all the uh, melee of, of things coming in to spot the ball. I think he lost his glasses. I've always said they can't see, so I think that might be the case. That, you know, it's a good An situation with glasses. Is a guy with a lot of confidence. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care what people say or think. Uh huh. McIntosh faked the draw, then pulled it back, and then ran it. I'll tell you what, I don't envy Lowell. I mean, it's just you know, again, they're running when and they have the players to be able to run it where. You know they're make they're taking what what you give them and that's hard to stop. Now after this play, I want to ask you a question about defensive strategy in terms of handling McIntosh. Julian on the carry pushes it up a couple. So no, that, now there are those who who will say, why don't you take, for instance, one of your best players on defense and just not necessarily play you know have everybody else play zone, but why can't you play the basketball equivalent of a, a box and one and just put one guy on him and say follow him no matter where he goes. And I think you can't do that because Julian is so good and so is the receiver. As Hudson is so good, and I think that causes problems uh, just because of the fact they they can run, he can throw like he's doing now. McIntosh on third and four. They had him bottled up, then he flushed right out of the pocket, avoided a tackler that would have wrapped him up. Short of the first down, Ben Rigby, but Rigby is left lying on the turf, pounding his fists and saying, how in the heck did I miss him? He needed five, he got six, moved the chains from the 32. I tell you what, that's, that's a great call. We use a couple of that uh, when we play against a good running back. Uh, we, we, we do it against uh, Warren Central and their offense, which is very similar to this, where we play a spy and try and take, take him away, but uh, something that uh, Lowell felt like they could go a different direction and again, I, I don't want to question that now because they're because they're because they're here playing. I'm sitting here next to you. Third quarter action's gone. 33 14. Wrights over Lowell. Wrights is a quarter away from a 4A state championship. Back with fourth quarter action after this timeout. You're watching the 4A football state finals presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air. And it's all on IHSAA Sports.org. 
Time to start feeling nervous. Time to break out the face paint. Time to overanalyze the brackets. Time to hit the road with the team. Time to completely lose your mind. Time to shave your head. What time is it, Indiana? Tournament, tournament time. time! High school tournament time holds a special place in the hearts of most Hoosiers. It turns the mild-mannered into the hot-blooded. It sends you and me and everybody we know into unimaginable states of ecstasy. It's hard on the blood pressure, but good for the soul. It's always a thrill, and it's never the same thrill twice. It's also a great time to practice good sportsmanship. So what are you waiting for, Indiana? It's tournament time. Get out there and support the high school in your community. High school sports, pure spirit, pure sport. This message brought to you by the Indiana High School Athletic Association. Thirty-three, fourteen. Your score in favor of Wright's RCA Dome. But again, uh, all have been great games with great plays and great players. But uh, there is an air of uncertainty with there being no Warren Central. People wondering. Carmel has been here so many times. Mo Moriarty's been here before. Carmel back after losing last year to Warren Central. Saying is Pike for real? Well, I think at this point they are. They wouldn't be here, certainly. Uh, but boy, this 5A for the first time has a lot of people saying, who's going to win it? It's going to be a great game against uh, two, two teams that are very similar. And uh, I know I'm real excited to see it. Big defensive play. Linebacker Dave Eastling steps through and makes the tackle, throws rights for a rare loss, a loss of three on that particular carry, and that hasn't happened very often. That might be one of the few of the only negative plays, uh, negative yardage plays in the ball game for rights. 356 yards of offense should tell you they haven't had too many negative plays. McIntosh rolling right to the short side. Sees a big lane, open up. Cuts it back left across the 35 to the 36. Got the loss back and then some. A pickup of about 10 across the 35 to the 37 is where they'll spot it. That brings up a third and five. I'll tell you one thing, Lowell defensively does a great job, other than probably one touchdown by McIntosh. When they touch you, they, they tackle you. I think that's probably a, a big credit to them. They are, they are really good on defense. I think they just run into a very, very uh, efficient um, offense here to, um, today. McIntosh with trips to the right, rolls it that way, kind of a flood route looking out the flat. Pass incomplete, a rare misfire to Jeff Hudson. Pretty good defense, though. Bring up a fourth and five, and the putt team. Will head to the field for just the second time, or will it? I think we're going to see that same uh, same scheme they they did the other day or the other uh, uh, first, in the half. first half where they uh, do it like almost like a uh, like a like a squib kick or where they're going to like a rugby kick. McIntosh will get on the ground, line drive. And Rolls inside the 15 and he's laid the rest of the 14 and he kicked it from the 30. When it's going good, it's going good. Yes, that, could it been, is. That, that could have been blocked by somebody's head, I think. One, one real high, but it, it, it sure as heck did, did, uh, did the job. How many times has, uh, has Lowell stopped him now today? That had to be one of the second or third times. That's, That's just second, the second punt. Second punt, yeah. yeah. Hey, well, that's nice. That was big. Again, you made the comment earlier, which is so true. You know, they're still playing hard. Lowell's still getting after it. They haven't given this thing up at all, and I give them credit. That's a big credit to Kirk Kennedy and, and, what, and what he stands for. And, and again, those kids are, are battling and battling, and, and, and that's a big deal. Monix and company break the huddle. Split backfield on first down and 10. 10 minutes left in this one. Midget in motion. Peck tries the middle. Road closed. That was your boy Moose that you like so much. Uh, they didn't get much, much, much movement on uh, Moose there. I think he did a nice job. Mark 
22 first downs to five in the ball. 259 yards rushing to 87. The passing yards pretty even at 104 to 106. 363 yards for Wrights to 193 for Lowell. Monix rushed out of the tight hit from behind, fumbles the football into the hands of one of his linemen, might have been Josh Hayden. Hayden gathers it up and carries it forward to the 15. Well, was very lucky there. Uh, again, I don't think uh, Monick never saw the guy from the, or the player from the from the from the backside. Did a great job. Uh, very heads up play by uh, by Lowell. Oh, that, that looks painful. Kind of, kind of like the hit the other day on the uh, quarterback from uh, from Harris Christian. Kind of rattles you a little bit. <laughs> that is an abrupt stop. Whew. Clock rolling under nine minutes to play now. Third down nine. Monix four-man front. Blitz from the outside. Nice throw and catch. Slant underneath to Lukasic. That'll be good for about 12. Good enough for a first down at the 27-yard line. I'll tell you, with Monix only being, being a junior, uh, and, you know, i tell you what, he's... He shows some signs of, uh, of really set his feet and throwing the ball, and, and that's certainly got to be a big positive for uh, Kirk and, uh, and what's coming back. Sixth first down of the ball game for Lowell. High formation. One of Coach Shibe's favorite things. All start on the offensive line. That doesn't cause the blood pressure to go up at all, does it? No, no, no. Doesn't even and bother me a bit. Really, at a great time like that, after you've had a great slant, throw and catch for a first down, you're starting to get a little rhythm, move the football a little bit, and all of a sudden, somebody in the huddle forgot the snap count. And it's one of those things you, you talk to kids about, the, you know, the yardage and losing and, and just, the, just what it does to your rhythm and tempo. and. In this case here, you know, Lowell didn't anything uh, negative to happen to them, and and they uh, certainly had a situation that was uh, uh, was not productive for them. Folks, I guarantee you, coaches work on that every day in practice, every day, and it doesn't matter. It certainly is just. Dis disruptive and it's something that again uh, the hardest part about coaching I think is putting your kids in game time situations and simulating what's going to happen during the game and the tempo of which the game is played at and uh, you know in that case there I think it's uh, uh, it's just difficult to do that sometimes and I think that's the challenge of all coaches is just to try to to get them that in, in that environment so they can perform uh, when it really counts uh, whether it be in the, in the state finals or in the first game of, of the season. Officials asked for the clock to be reset from 8.13 to 8.17. Had to come to the sidelines, get on the phone upstairs. One of the guys on the clock, an outstanding official who, whose crew had the Evansville Wrights Cathedral game. Uh, Longtime defensive coordinator under Wayne Staley and Jim Kaiser of Monrovia. Been official for years now since he retired from coaching. Doug County from upstairs running clocks for the IHSAA here this, this weekend. Split backfield on first and 15. Monix looks to throw under pressure. Throws it underneath. Passes caught by Midget. Midget gets the loss back. Barely. Pretty good coverage out in the flat by Chris Digg, who had about 140 tackles coming into play today on the season. A very active outside linebacker and solid in pass coverage. So it was a nice play. And Monica, again, he's, and he's been under duress. And to his credit, he's really has calmed down in the second half and has delivered some, some nice footballs. And I think that's, uh, again, a credit to him, a credit to Coach Kennedy. And, uh, and again, Lowell is chipping away at, 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 at this thing, and this, it just may be a little bit uh, too late. Second down and 10. Twins to the left. Monix 
Looking, looking, plenty of time to throw. Throws it back underneath and really didn't step into the throw. Had his tight end open, Jeff Barker, and he was open for a gain of about 13, but uh, was just a little flat-footed, favored the back foot a little bit on the release, Coach, and uh, really didn't step through the ball very well. Now, he's really hard, uh, you know, to teach a kid sometimes they got to redirect their, their, their feet. In other words, I've got to step to where I'm throwing. In that case there, he, as you said, he, 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 was on, he was on his back foot, and he's just a step forward a little bit more. Third down and a little more than 10. Trips to the right. Modix looking that way. Three receiver set. Still looking, still looking. Throws it underneath. Tap once, tap twice, and out of bounds. <laughs> Pass was intended for Lucasic. Roadruck also there. Plenty of defenders there. Including Houston Hobbs. There really wasn't much uh, room to put that ball in there as a, as a credit to what Wrights did on, on, on defense. They put great great pressure on, on the quarterback, and then, again, there wasn't a lot of place to put that ball. Seven minutes left. Lang will kick to Hudson. You would think he would kick it away from him. He's trying to do just that. Angles it toward the right. Floats back toward Hudson, though, and he steps underneath it. Off the fair catch to the 40. Following up on the advice that he was given the last time it was punted toward him, he caught it in traffic and fumbled it, which led to the score. White starts to celebrate a little bit. They're sensing they're going to take some hardware back to the pocket city. That's a big deal for Wright football. Uh, they haven't been here in playing state finals since the, the 1970s, I, I believe. And 77 they were runner-up. Yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, again, a story program, the Rice Bowl. Most people in, the, in Indiana football know about the Rice Bowl and having been there. And, and uh, again, it's just an awesome experience to see players there. And it's neat for, for this program and Coach Hart. Paul McIntosh starts to run the option gets shut off, wrapped up, and dropped. Dave Eastley on the tackle from his linebacker position. It's kind of a hard part during, during the game. There's 6.30 to go in, in the game, and again, the Rice kids are trying to keep their focus, but it's really hard to do that when you're up 33 to 14, and, and you don't want to see silly things happen, and I think as, as a coach, trying to get your kids to just stay focused is normally a challenge. McIntosh out of the gun. Nothing doing for Tyler Julian. Might be a bit of a let up in intensity along that offensive front a little bit, as you just alluded to, but one thing's for sure, guys, the black shirts are still bringing it. Tell you what, Kirk Kenny is one of the most intense individuals you'll ever meet, and I, that does not surprise me a bit. Uh, his emotion and integrity of what he brings to the little program. His kids are not going to quit. Hudson comes in motion. Draw by McIntosh. Not going to get it. He'll get to the 45, which will give him somewhere in the neighborhood 150 yards rushing on his 24th carry. Tyler needs a couple of yards to get it at triple digits. 264 yards rushing on 46 carries on the afternoon for Wrights. Stuck on 22 first downs. Clock rolling toward the five minute mark. We'll see if we get the quick kick again here. That is what Lowell is anticipating. Penalty marker down. Well, the Lowell defense has done a nice job here. They've they, they given up 15 first downs in the first half. And they've only given up seven here in, in the second. They've really managed the game a lot better uh, in the second half. Be sure to nominate the Dial 1 Scholar Athlete, the $1,000 scholarship given one male to one female scholar athlete every month of the 2007-2008 school year. Nominate your student athlete today on ISSAASports.org. Now 
Now they're setting up McIntosh for a straight punt here after the five yard penalty on fourth and ten. Not much pressure. Kind of a knuckleball. Bounds down around the 35 and it'll roll harmlessly toward the 25. Finally come to rest at around the 22. Another nice stand by the by the by the low defense. And uh, again, they've done a nice job here. Uh, Keeping after their intensity and not and not, and not backing off, and uh, they haven't quit. That's a that's a, a big reason why they're still playing, and, and they're playing here in the 4A state championship. Again, the 1A featured Sheridan beating Rockville 34-28. Lures your 2A champion 21-6. Chitard over South Bend St. Joe's 31-7. Wright's in command here, 33-14. Four and a half to play. Timeout on the field. We're back after this. You're listening and watching the 4A Football State Finals presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAAsports.org. temperatures are just around the corner. Will your system keep you warm? Dial One Hour will show up for your appointment on time or the service call is free. Don't waste your time. Call the experts at Dial One Hour today. Get a free Amana gas furnace when you purchase an Amana air conditioner or heat pump only at Dial One Hour. Dial One Hour Air. Four and a half to play in this one. Wright's in command 33 to 14. I'll be anxious to see what uh, Lowell, Lowell's approach will be here with the last uh, part of, of the game here. Uh, be, I, I just think, again, Lowell's done nothing but show fight the, the entire game. And, and to their credit, their kids have done a nice job here in the second half of uh, uh, slowing down uh, that uh, Wright's offense. and. Again, the Rice defense has been equal to the challenge, really, other than the uh, than the drop punt has done a nice job of, uh, of really of containing. First and ten. Call sweet. Plenty of contain there. Ooh. Nothing <laughs> doing for Stephen Peck. So Wrights, uh, Wrights is playing well. And uh, again, they were on a team on a mission after last year's uh, regional loss to, uh, to Columbus North. Uh, and when they dropped down to 4A, I had a feeling they probably were, were going to be a team to uh, be, be reckoned with. Under pressure, Monix. All kind of pressure. Breaks three points. And then the tackle from the hunt. 50 in on the stop, chasing him down from behind, Anthony Ewers. It was a great job by Ewers just to keep going. He was blocked, and I'd love to see defenders who are blocked uh, stay with it. And he certainly did did do that there, and uh, was a big play for, uh, for Evansville Rice. Monix under pressure, Winger, Winnegar, I should say. Among the first there. I would say we'll start seeing uh, Rice play some of young, his younger kids here. Boy, it's as though that before the defense went out on the field, it was as though the staff said, hey, look, uh, we're letting up a bit. So let's, let's go get this thing, put the wraps on it, and not leave any doubt. Don't give up any cheap ones at the end. And they did do that exactly. David Lang stands on top of the Colts logo, putting from the end zone. We'll ship it off to Jeff Hudson. And over in kick. Hudson, no attempt to field it. Takes a pretty nice bounce and will rattle across the 50 to about the 48 yard line. They yes. send McIntosh in and then give him a curtain call after one play. Exactly what is going to happen here. I think that's a great call, a great tribute to Paul and, and to what he's done and meant to, to, to this program. And uh, the classic move there by Wright by not trying to, to return the punt. And uh, 
you know, again, I give a lot of credit. It's been a, uh, two well-coached teams, a great football game, and uh, uh, it's neat to see it happen. McIntosh standing under center. Takes the snap. Gives the football to Nicholas Kaffenberger. Right now, McIntosh staying on the field. Pickup of about seven, by the way, for Kaffenberger. He comes to the sideline. Under two minutes to play in the ball game now. 33-14. Wright's going to win a state championship. Haven't been here since 1977. And then they finished runner-up. Beat an outstanding cathedral team. Came off the carpet to beat them literally at the University of Indianapolis. Last week in the semi stayed in. Boy, to say, they had an easy road through the postseason once, the, especially they got to the regional round, would certainly be inaccurate. Wholesale changes now. Starting offense coming off of the field for Evansville Wrights, appropriately enough, getting a standing ovation. Moose Campbell, Tyler Mattingly, James Oglesby, Adam Herman, and Josh Leffler. Slade Gander, the tight end. Jeb Hudson, Tyler Julian, Ryan Williams, Ryan McIntosh, and of course, Paul McIntosh. 2,100 yards coming into play. In passing. 1,400 yards rushing on the day. 24 carries, 151 yards. The passing department, McIntosh, 11 carries for 20, 11 out of 21, we should say. Completions and attempts for, that looks like, 164 yards. Offensively, 70 plays, 376 yards. 43 plays, 200 yards. The average is a little over five yards per play. Punted the football just three times. Time of possession basically dead even. But again, the final score, 33 to 14. Wright's going to win a state championship. Final carry of the ball game. Your final score, 33-14. Wright celebrates a state championship. Deservedly in front of a outstanding crowd that made the long journey from Evansville to the capital city to enjoy this one. They will all drive home together and I'm sure celebrate this one for many, many days to come. We'll be back with the wraps on it after this timeout. You're watching the 4A Football State Finals presented by Dial One Hour Heating and Air on IHSAA Sports.org. What is that? It's the most comprehensive coverage of Indiana high school sports ever. IHSAA Sports.org will have live video coverage beginning with this year's high school football season. IHSAA Sports.org will have audio and on-site blogs of all high school sports, photo galleries, editorials, score updates, and on-demand content. It's cutting edge. It's, it's on, on demand. demand. It's IHSAA Sports.org. Relive the magic. Lowell finishes the season with a record of 13-2. Evansville writes 15-0, a perfect season for them. And uh, I think they put on display how they won the regional and how they won the semi-state against the Cathedral. Their whole arsenal on display today. I tell you what, that was an impressive game. Again, when you've got all those kids, it's hard to stop everybody. And I just thought that uh, Coach Hart did a great job of, uh, of using all his weapons. And you've got all that, all those weapons. It is very difficult to slow somebody down. And I tell you what, all the credit in the world goes to uh, to Evansville. Uh, Coach Hart's done, done a great job uh, every, everywhere he's been. And to come into Evansville Rights and win a state championship, that's a credit to he and his great program. And I'll tell you what, I'm so happy for uh, uh, Paul McIntosh and what he's done. Uh, had one special day and, and to cap it off like this and, and to do things, what they did against a great Lowell team. Uh, says something about the Wrights football team. Again, uh, 11 of 21 of the passing department looks like 164 yards, 24 carries, 151 yards on the ground. What a total effort. You look at it statistically, they dominated every phase of the game, and 
Again, the score 33-14. Let's give a lot of credit to Lowell. They played hard for the final home run. I'll tell you what, Kirk Kenny's done a great job to be back here. Second time in three years to be back here. Uh, that's a big deal. You know, he's he, he's got a thing going at Lowell that's just very, very special. Uh, just a credit to he and his program. His kids never quit, never slowed down. Uh, what a tremendous coach and Kirk Kennedy. Uh, this Lowell football team to get back here again is just, it's not easy to do it once. Let, let them come back here again like like they've done with the same coach. And, again, those kids never quit. They played a great football game. Uh, they came up a little short here today, though. And then your final, 33-14, to 14, Wrights are 4A state champion. Don't forget, coming up in just about 50 minutes or so, rejoin us here on IHSAAsports.org. Should be a dandy 5A showdown as Carmel takes on Pike. The producer-director is Celeste Kennan. Camera operations today by Greg Magnuson, Amy Harper, and Dan McGowan. Audio by Rob Nichols. IHSAAsports.org. Live video blog written by Ira Mayer. Again, your final score, 33-14. For Lance Shive, this is Mark James from the RCA Dome saying so long, everybody.